Welcome back to the second part of this zombie soccer game recreation. So far we've created an agent that will push the ball around a field. Now we're going to add in some force to the ball so that when the agent moves and gets close to the ball, he'll look as though he's kicking it, as you can see there. Now this is a really simple change to our existing code. Now this is going to happen inside of the play ball inside of your update. In here we add an if agent remaining distance is less than or equal to zero, then we will add a force to the ball. So this remaining distance is part of your nav mesh agent and it tells you how far the agent has to get to its destination location. So this is constantly updated by the system as the agent is moving around. When the agent gets very close to the ball, okay, he's going to be at less than or equal to one. The important thing here is where we add the force. So we grab the rigid body that's attached to the ball with our get component and we use an add force method on that. But what we do with the force itself is we use the forward facing vector that belongs to the agent because this script is on the agent and we're multiplying that by the amount of force that we want to add. So if you had like 500 here, it would be like kicking the ball much harder. The forward facing vector, if we just go back here and click on our player and hit the W key. At the moment, you can see the forward facing vector is this way. And this is the direction that the ball will be kicked. So if I press play and switch back to the scene really quickly so you can see that, you can see the blue vector and that's the way the ball will be. So it doesn't matter where the agent is in relation to the ball in world space, it's going to push the ball in the direction that the agent is going because the agent is always pushed along its forward vector. So with that code in, you can save it and now run it and you'll have the same result that I do where the ball is kicked forward. And it's up to you how much force you want in there. Let's just leave it at 100 for now. The next thing you may want to do is to ensure that the agent only kicks the ball when the ball is in line with the goal. Consider this situation. Agent A is in line with the goal and if he kicks the ball, it's going to travel towards the goal. Agent B is not in line and the ball, if he kicks it, is going to travel away. We can draw a vector to represent the path the ball needs to travel to get to the goal. And this is calculated by taking the ball's position away from the goal's position. If the agent kicks the ball, it's going to push it in the direction of the agent's forward vector. We can tell using vector math that the agent will be kicking the ball towards the goal if the angle between the forward vector and the vector between the ball and the goal is sufficiently small. To implement this in our code, we need to know where the goal is. So at the very top, we'll put in a public transform for the goal. And then we have to do the calculations of the vector between the goal and the ball in the update because that's constantly changing. So in the update, we'll create a vector three Let's call that ball to goal. And that's going to equal the goal dot position minus the ball dot position. And then in the if statement, we can test for the angle between the forward facing vector of our agent and this ball to goal vector. So inside of this if statement, I'll put an and. So if we're in distance of the ball and the vector three dot angle between the ball to goal and our this dot transform dot forward is less than a particular angle value. Now that goal is quite big. So let's say 10 degrees, then we will kick at the ball. So save that, switch back into Unity, and we want to grab hold of the player and let the player know about the goal. So if we find the script 
for play ball where it's got the exposed goal. We've got a red player, so the red player is going to go for the red goal. So that's why I named these before so we could tell. So I drag the red goal down and drop it into that position there. Now when you press play, you'll see that the player will kick the ball because he's facing in that direction. But when we turn around after we've scored that goal, the player is going to come back, but he'll be facing the direction of the blue goal. So in this case, he's not going to try and kick it. Now if we can wait until he gets the ball turned around, so he will now when he comes back after hitting that side of the field. And if he lines it up, he will try and kick it. Yep. So you can see him kicking it again there with the right direction. At this point, you can create another player. So duplicate the one you've got in the hierarchy. Let's turn the first one into red player and the other one we'll call blue player and select the blue player and drag and drop your blue material onto that player to distinguish him and let's just move it out to there in the scene. Now with this blue player selected you can change its goal. It won't be the red goal anymore it'll be the blue goal. So get the blue goal, drag and drop that down onto there and then when we press play it'll be the blue kicking towards the blue goal and the red kicking towards the red goal. Now in this case it'll be hard to see a real match going on because there's only two of them but if we just stop playing and let's duplicate this guy four times and the blue guy four times and we will go back into that play ball code and give the ball a bit more of a decent kick so let's turn that up to a 500 force and save let's go back and play so now when they get into the right direction they will kick the ball and you can see there's a bit more uh, interesting effects going on that they get that chance And it makes the whole thing a lot more dynamic. All right, that's looking good. Let's look at making our agents just a little bit more intelligent. Currently, if this were the situation where our agent was here and the ball was here and the goal is in this direction, the agent really doesn't care about where the goal is, only when it comes to kicking. So this agent's going to come up to the ball and then the physics system's going to take the ball and the agent's just going to keep running around and chasing the ball. Ideally, what an intelligent player would do is know that the goal is over here and the ball is over here. And then before kicking the ball, you would want to position yourself over here, which is going to be opposite the side of the ball to where the goal is. Now, to calculate this position here, it's another little bit of vector math, and it's going to be the ball's position minus this vector. So the vector that's going towards the goal, we're going to come back in the other direction and put the agent just here. So the code to do that, let's open up our play ball, is quite simple. We First of all, in the update, we just work out a desired destination of where we want to go. And that's going to be the ball's position minus this ball to goal vector, the one that's facing from the ball to the goal. So we take it in the exact opposite direction. Notice I'm also normalizing it because we only want to be on the other side of the ball, not the same distance on the other side of the ball from the goal. So we're going to take normalize, which is a vector of size one, but still traveling in that same direction. So we're just going to position the agent just behind the ball and put the ball between the agent and the goal. So now this desired destination becomes our agent's set destination down here. 
and the rest of the code stays the same. So save that and we'll go back and run it and have a look where our agent now moves to. Instead of the ball being the desired destination, it's going to be over here. So if I just press play. All right, so I've just pressed pause when it got to the ball because I wanted to show you what's happening. Let's go back to the game. So he's moved to the position that you wanted in. Notice I've also turned off all of the other players so that they're not in the road at this time. When the ball reaches its destination, notice that it's facing in this direction here, which is not within 10 degrees of the goal vector, which would be facing in this way. Therefore, that if statement is not going to trigger. And if I just keep it playing, the agent has turned a little bit towards the ball, um, but not enough because it's still without a 10 degrees angle here so that it's not going to kick the ball. So when the agent first arrives in position, it's definitely not facing in the right direction. And now it's just sort of pushing the ball slowly along both with their physics movement. And this is not what you want. When the agent first arrives at the ball, you want them to turn towards the ball so that it's then facing in the right direction to then kick it. And that means making the forward vector of the agent face in the same direction as the ball to goal vector. To do that, back in our code, we're going to add in a slurp statement. And that will be an else on our if, which is down the bottom. So let's just add that in here. So if we're not kicking the ball, then we want to be turning towards the ball. And this statement will do it for us. So we can use a quaternion.slurp that takes our current rotation and turns it around slowly to look in the direction of the ball to goal vector, which is just there using the quaternion.look rotation. Now I use slurp a lot in moving characters around, so you might be familiar with it uh, from my other tutorials. The other thing here is that if we're outside of the range for kicking, which is here, then we're going to be slurping towards the ball. Now, this slurp is basically going to be happening by the nav mesh agent code anyway. So checking if we're outside of the range and then turning at the same time is kind of superfluous. We don't really need it. Instead, we only want to turn or force the code to do the turning when we're next to the ball. So what I'm going to do is just split up this if statement like this and put it around everything else. So I'll take that out of there and I'll put an if around this vector. And only do all of this work if we are within range of the ball like that. So we're next to the ball. We then see, can we kick the ball? If we can't kick the ball, then we're just going to turn towards the ball because we know we've already moved to a position where we're on the right side of the ball for kicking. So save that. And back in Unity, I'll just enable all of those players that I disabled before so that we actually have some teams that will play against each other. Remember, they're using the same code, so they're going to all react in the same way. And you'll find that the agents will be trying to keep the ball up their end of the field, which they are. And they're not perfect shots either um, because of the way of how they're aligned when they go to kick and their movement and all that, they might calculate that they've got a good kick, but they might not be in the perfect spot for that kick and therefore it will miss the goal. So you get some really nice inherent behavior in this. And I really like the movement that we've got where they will go up to the ball if they're facing the wrong direction and actually scoop around behind the ball. From here, you can add uh, different random kicks you can change the speed of the players. You can have scoring and all that in there too. Okay, so that's the basics of the soccer game that I wanted to show you using the nav mesh, nav mesh agents, and some really simple code 
just for chasing a ball around on the field. In the next video, as promised, I will show you how to turn our capsules into zombies. Remember, if you're enjoying my tutorials and learning lots, then please subscribe, as well as consider supporting me on Patreon, where you'll get access to all the tutorial project files and lots of other benefits. Also, if you're interested in learning more about AI and Unity, including NavMeshes, then check out my Beginner's AI course for Unity.